Most time when I'm feeling really good, I don't want to wake up seven thirty. So yeah. Now we got an influx. All right. Hi right, guys. Any questions from homework? Yes. Number eighty. Eight oh. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I, let me ask you guys this here. Um, so, when you take stuff out, so what can come out of there? I'm working my way up to your question. Two. Two, it's amazing. So, if you're thinking two out, what's left here? Why exactly is there an X left there? Because what do you do when you take something out? What operation are you actually doing? Division. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I put a 1 there. 4 divided by 2 is 2. That's crazy. So let me show you something that right now might not make the most sense, but trust me later, you have to do stuff like this. What if I had this and I wanted to take a 4 out of it? Why would you think that's silly? Why would taking a 4 out be kind of silly? It's all right. Why would you never? Would you ever take a four out of this? If I if I just said factor this, what would you take out? Two. Two. So if I said take a four out of this, you go. Oh, and I say just do it. Well, what did you do when you took a two out? You did what operation? You divided. So I can still take a four out of this. Totally, I can take any damn thing I want to out of that. To be honest, four divided by four is one, so it's one x. Two divided by four is one half. So there's a one half there. So that problem takes us to the kind of the next level, but it almost makes it easier because if I said, what is A divided by C? What is A divided by C? A, a over C. I mean, you can't even do it, right? So, so let me do it again. So what if I want to take a 5 out? What if I want to take a 5 out of this? What's left? 4 fifths x. 5 by 2 fifths. Plus 2 fifths, yeah, yeah. So it's really, really good to go to the next level and make you really realize what you're doing and then you have more flexibility in case that helps you somewhere. Is that cool? And, and, and let, me, let me do one more thing and then I'll, and then I'll leave you guys alone with, with this. Um, what if I had this here? What can you take out of there? Can you take anything out of there? Yeah, so so on this one, you would take a 2 out, right? You wouldn't really take a 4 out, even though I just forced us to do that. You normally would just take a 2 out, because 2 is the biggest thing that goes into everything. And, it, and actually, it's the smaller number, so it's going to be guaranteed to go into both, have a better chance to go into both. So that's the smaller number here, 1 half. So like Jackson said, if you take a 1 half out, I'll do the first part. I love the X. And what do you get here? 14. 14. Yeah, 7 divided by 1 half. This will be x plus 14. And check it. 1 half times x is 1 half x. 1 half times 14, 7. So you really, it's interesting, you, you, you kind of look at it one way, but then you have to force yourself to realize this is what I'm really doing. I'm really dividing something out. Whatever I put out here, I'm dividing it out of what's inside. And then it, you can make it more general. All right, cool. I like it because that was a weird one when you first read through it. Okay, anything else from homework? Yeah, homework, the thing you all are doing? All right, good. So it's going okay? Sure, all right. Uh, so let's get back into it. Last time we finished 6-1. Uh, so before I get too far away from that, let me give you guys one to try. You guys try this one out here. Oh, well, it's interesting. Blah, 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 blah.
것이 What do you always try first? I might do it a different way than you did, but we should end up at the same place. Find, the find like the LCD, which is two. I mean, the, the yeah, I mean, the GCF. Good. Yeah, I, like GCF. I know what you mean. Yeah. It's got three letters, dude. One of them is C. <laughs> Leave me alone. BMW. Different. So what is the GCF two? Two. Yeah. And Y. Y. Cool. So because everybody's got a two, and everybody's got a Y. That's why we call it the greatest, the biggest thing common that they all have factor that's a part of a multiplication it's amazing yes sir um i got a uh, in parentheses i got six y cubed minus 12 y squared minus y plus four so you gotta be careful right here this should be what three y yeah three y cubed i like it so you lose a y everywhere and you also divide all the numbers by two right just miscalculate i understand these things happen. 12. 12? 1, 2. Squared, good. 2 is gone, so you're left with y. 1 y, and then plus 4. 4. You took the poor little y either way. Yes, ma'am? I thought you said the, the y losing one, so why didn't you find 4? It totally did. How many y's did oh, it have? Sorry. I thought that was a 2. That's all right. Cool. I like it. I like it. Now, if you didn't do that, if you just started to group, you're not wrong, it's just guess what? At the end, you're able to take a 2i out of one of the little things. You, either you take it out first or you take it out last. But I want to show you taking it out first, that's the smarter way to do it. Because then everything inside, there's less shit inside. I don't have to worry about as much. Right? All the numbers are smaller, I get less y's. This little dude, now what's he do? Don't forget this poor little dude. He just comes for the ride. He's there, he's just like, I'm done, I'm just going to come along with you wherever you go. So, so what do I do inside here? What do I use now? I pretty much gave it away a second ago. But grouping, because there's one, two, three, four terms. So these two group, these two group. What comes out of these two? Good, three. Good, and two Y's, I like it. So what's left? We have one Y's left here, minus. Good, because you took his two Y's away. Me. Now, remember what I said. So is everybody cool so far? Do you guys see what's happening? So I took the 2i out of the way, so he just comes for the ride. Then inside, I group it. So this is a little GCF problem. Everybody had a 3, everybody had a y squared. Bam. Now, what do I know has got to show up over here? Just him. Y that guy. So why is it not that guy yet? And then I just do what I have to do to make it this guy. No, no, no. i got to take it out, so i got to... Take out a what? Negative one. Take a negative one out. I like it. Do you guys see that? What told me to do that? I know there's supposed to be a Y here. There's a negative Y. All right, take the negative out. And guess what the positive 4 is now going to become? Negative 4. See, that's it's telling me what to do. The problem is telling me what to do. you got to love that. So then negative Y divided by negative 1 is Y. 4 divided by negative 1 is minus 4. I know I'm on the right track because these are the same. If they're not the same, you're totally in the wrong track. 
something happened wrong, don't continue down that track because there's weird shit down that track. Don't go there. So now I know I can do so. Two Y, still there. What can come out of here? Three Y squared. Okay, I'll go with you. Three Y squared minus one, and then we got Y minus four. The reason I was able to do that last step is because these are the same. If they are not the same, you did something wrong, or maybe it's not factorable or something. Don't just plow ahead. You just put everything I got down. Pray. All right? No. It's not going to work. But the biggest mistake there is people do this and then they forget it. And why could that possibly not be the answer? Because when I multiply this out, I don't get this. It's missing a 2 and a 1. Right? So you got to bring everything with you. So it's exactly like if I did, um, uh, what? What do you got, Jeff? 36. Break that down. Is that 2 times 18, right, for example? And then this is... Two times nine, and then this is. You wouldn't say the answer is three times three. Of course you wouldn't. What do you? The two should come for the ride. That comes for the ride. That comes for the ride. That's the answer. Is everybody right? So whatever you take out, it's got to come for the ride. It's a part of the answer. Hey, how guys doing? Some of you look pained. Everybody looks awake, or at least eyes are. What is it? I got um, negative 2y times 1 plus 3y squared. So, where'd you take out a negative 2y? I took it out of... You took it out? I got... I, thought, I did grouping right away. Okay. And then it came out to be 6y to the 3rd. And then in parentheses, y minus 4 plus negative 2y. And then in parentheses, y minus 4. Sure, yeah, so you, 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 you got here, you should have gotten here, All right? Yes, based on what you just told me, All right? Take a y minus 4, this is a negative 2y in the second piece, right? You just, uh, I don't know why you thought you had to take a negative 2 out. <laughs> These are just turned backwards. If you take a negative out, then this should change to a minus. Um, yeah. Okay. So it's really the same. I mean, or, um, if I took a negative out of here, that would become positive and that would become negative, right? That's how that's how it happens. If I take a negative out or put a negative in, everybody's sign changes. All right. But no no reason to do that. Okay. All right. Cool. I like it. Maybe. Yes. So I missed yesterday, so that's... Killing me, I guess. So I see the first factor. So you got the top line, and then the second, or the, the second line down. I get that. Uh, I'm lost as far as when you get to the third line. I have no idea how you got any of that. So tell me. Uh, well, here, let's let's real quick. Let's build back up to there, just in case a few other people weren't here. Um, yeah, and it sucks. Yesterday was a bad day to miss because my phone decided. Well, I decided to have technical issues with my phone, so. Not much of a video from yesterday, but uh, so help me. Let me let me do something real quick here. Um, how would you factor this? It seems like a very silly question, but how would you factor that? Three eight. Eight, right? They both have an A. Yeah. You take an A out. Good. Silly question, right? It's like all right, whatever, Jeff. What the hell? How's that help me? So what if I had this? See how this is like that. These are the same, so it came out. These are the same, so it can come out. It's the same thing, right? So that's the idea behind grouping. It says, and see how I have A times 3x minus B. This thing times 3x minus B. They're the same problem. All right, so that's how we built up yesterday. So we built up to grouping. So that's what this does. It says, oh, if I could take something out of these two, and something out of these two, and this is the same, I can do this kind of thing. So grouping says when you have more than, when you have like four terms or more, you try to do them in pairs. You try to do them in pairs to see if that'll work. And there's a lot, believe it or not, there are a lot of things in the real world that will have that happen. They'll have that kind of thing 
twice. This isn't just completely made up for this class, right? right? This actually happens enough that this is a method that we use. Does it always work? No, if I made this 10, that's five, this thing doesn't go damn anywhere. And that'll definitely happen too. It's not guaranteed to work, but it is something to try. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So that's kind of like where we got to yesterday was grouping. So today we're going to focus on, so what we're going to do is this. We've talked about GCF. We've talked about what if it's four or more terms. Now we're going to talk about what if it's three terms. And then we're going to talk about what if it's two terms. Right? So basically it's all based on how many terms there are. So let's talk about three terms, and let's build up to that. Let me do something that seems completely unrelated. I'll say that a different way. I'm going to do something that seems completely unrelated. Uh, can you guys take a second and tell me, don't say anything out loud. Uh, can you come up with two numbers that multiply to be, some of you guys know where I'm going with this, multiply to be 18. And add to be, oh, you can do it, Jeff. 11. Don't say anything out loud. Think about it for just a minute. Can you come with two numbers that do those two things? So write those down. If you got them, write them down. Don't say anything. Now come up with two numbers that multiply to be negative. Uh, Pick something, Jeff. 60 and add to be 4. This somehow has something to do with factoring. But I'd like to just start here because this is a number I could ask my 88 students. I could just have my 88 students start to work on this. This is just working with numbers, right? Not a big deal. But this is a very integral part of the next form of factor. So what about this first one? This isn't too bad, right? What number is multiply 18 and add to be 11? 9 and 2. So I could make it a little list. 3 and 6, that doesn't add to be 11. 18 and 1, that doesn't add to be 11. 2 and 9, yay! All right, so you're like, great, Jeff, little victories. Uh, so what about this one? It's a little bit weirder because it's got to multiply by negative 60, which means the two numbers have to be the same sign or different signs? They have to be different signs. So when I add them, I'm sort of actually subtracting them. Does that make sense? So that's why 4 is okay. Some of you guys, I don't know when I wrote the 4 down, you're like, how the hell do they 60 and then add the 4? Because one of them is negative, right? So to make negative 60, I could do 12 and 5. But that would make negative 7 or 7. That's no good. Obviously, what is it? 10 and negative 6. Yeah, 10 and 6. And, of course, to be positive 4, the big one's got to be positive, so the smaller one is negative. Do you guys get a feel for that? That is not a high-level math problem. That's, that's a you know, low-level number crunching, do you understand numbers kind of computational thing that you can all do. I like it. So how the hell does that apply to factor? All right, I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, so remember that. Hold on to that. I want to give us some motivation as to why this works. Where do trinomials come from? Weird. And when I multiply two things together, we've multiplied several things together. When did we ever get three terms when after multiplying two things? I don't know if you guys... Remember. So what do you get when you add, multiply this? Um, X yeah, x squared. 9x. Oh, sorry. Yeah. X. Plus 9x. Yeah. Plus 9x. Yeah. Plus 8. Plus 8. Plus 8. You said 9x, and I heard minus. And I'm like, wait a minute. So you're right, 9x. And then, of course, the middle terms I can... Now, why does this look very familiar to something we just did? I said find factors of 18. Two numbers that multiply 18 to add to be 11, right? 
Because where did 18 come from? 2 times 9. Where did 11 come from? 2 plus 9. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start here. And the way to find the answer, the way to break them back up, is to think about, well, what two numbers would multiply this and what two numbers would add to be this? Because that's the two numbers that have to go here and here. So let's do a different, let's do a, a, something based on some different numbers here. So if I had this, x squared uh, plus 7x plus 12. Now watch, I really want you guys to understand how this works. Because I know any two numbers like this x minus 7, x plus 4, x plus 8, x plus 100. Uh, it's going to be basically the same thing that's going to happen, right? All it's going to change yeah. is these numbers. And they're going to change based on what the numbers I put here. So it should be able to work backwards. So if I got this as the answer, somebody multiplied two things out and they got that as the answer. Three, four. I know what goes in the front. What makes x squared? Yes. So that's, that's known. The only unknown is what goes there and there. So now I just got to think what makes 12 when I multiply and what makes 7 when I add? 3 and 4. I like it. So I would put plus 3, plus 4, and I'm done. All right, cool. That's how you factor variable expressions. And just to remind you, uh, I did this the other day. If x was, I don't care, if x is negative... Two, uh, well, let's say negative one. Bless you. What number is this? I always want to remind you guys, variable expressions are numbers. If I just knew what the variable was, that it would be a number. So if x is negative one, what number is this? It would be one. One. Plus seven. Seven times negative one. Uh, minus seven. Plus twelve. And what's that? Yeah, it's uh, 5. No. Plus 5? Five. 5. 1 minus 7 is? Negative 6 plus 12 is? 6. 6. There we are. Okay. I knew it. I had to And so that's what the original thing would be would be that. What would the answer be if x is negative 1? It should be the same. Negative 1 plus 3 is? Which is 12. Negative 1 plus 3 is? 2. 2. Oh. Negative 1 plus 4 is? 3. Is this the way to factor that? Yeah. Hell yeah. So just to remind you. Yes, sir. Well, if x is negative 1, then wouldn't it be negative 12? What would be negative 12? No, because what's this? What is it? It's 12. Doesn't give a shit what x is. No. What are the only parts of this that care what x is? The parts that have an x in them. So if x is negative 1, that'll change. If x is negative 1, that'll be, that'll be whatever the hell. Yeah. That is right. just always 12. Okay. Good point, though. I like it. But of course, only the parts that have x are going to be affected. So you never have to do this. Again, let me tell you. You never have to do this. This is not part of the problem. This is just me showing you behind the scenes that when you factor this expression, and that wasn't that hard, you just factored an infinite number of numbers all at once, right? That's a pretty good day's work right there. We're going to do some more. We're insane. Yes? Do you factor something that's like a bigger problem, a harder problem? Yes, of course. You know how it works. We start small and then we build. So obviously this wasn't too bad because there's not that many factors of 12. You barely had to think too much to come up with something that made 7. So let's do some larger numbers to see how they work. Well, first off, before I do that, let's do some negative stuff and then we'll make the numbers bigger. So what if I had this here? So this is all. What you got, Jeff? I don't know, man. All right, I'll do that. Yeah. So I don't know. Have you guys? How many of you guys ever done like the yes. master product? Mm -hmm. If you like it, I personally, this doesn't mean anything about it. I have no idea why that helps people so much. I really personally don't. I don't understand drawing an X and putting numbers in it. But if it helps you, I don't care that I don't understand. Do whatever helps you. Because it, it, doing the X and putting, I don't even know where you put stuff, putting stuff in there is not any different than just taking negative 18 and, and figuring out factors of it, right? It's the same thing, but if it makes you feel better. 
Say again? It's just like a puzzle. If you do an X, then the middle number goes on top, and then the other one goes on the bottom, then you can do C. I think it makes, well, I'm not going to say too much. Yeah, whatever, too much. why ever, or whatever it does for you, do it. Right? I don't, it's fine. I just don't understand. Because uh, the whole idea, again, what is the whole idea when I see this? I want to find two numbers that do what in this case? Multiply to negative 18. Multiply to negative 18. Add to be negative 7, right? So it could be like 3 and 6 where one of them is negative, but that would just make 3 or negative 3, right? When I add them together. So I throw that out. So what else? What Nine is it? Two. 9 and 2. Which one's negative? 9. Nine. The bigger one, so that it comes out negative when I add them, right? Mm. I like it. Good. So then how would I factor this? X minus 9. Uh, if somebody wrote this, are they wrong? No. no. Come in there. Of course not, because 2 times 4 is the same as 4 times 2. It doesn't matter the multiplication, I don't care which way you put the answer. I like it. Good. Good, good, good. Not too bad. Alright, so Johan says, your numbers are weak. So, let's see. He's like, I didn't say that, Jeff, don't worry. No. That's what you meant, I know it is. Um, so what if I had this bad boy here? Uh, what you got, Jeff? Oh. Good. Alright, take a minute to try to figure that out. Don't say anything out loud. And then I'll try to show you a really smart way to do this. And I'll see if you understand. If you don't understand, you can just do it like we've been doing it. So uh, you could factor negative 60. We, we just factored like negative 60, like 10 and 6. One of them's negative, but that would make 4 or negative 4. It wouldn't make 11. I could do 12 and 5, but that would make 7 or negative 7, right? So neither one of those is good so far. I need to make 11. So you see how it's sort of like a Price is Right game in a way? 10 wasn't big enough because that's too... And then 12 isn't big enough, so let me try 14. Does that work? No? Shit. 15. Does 15 times something make 60? Yes. yes. 15 times 4. And 15 and 4, which one would be negative to make negative 11? 15. Negative 15. Cool. Is there a shortcut to that? Sort of. You ready? So when this number gets larger, and obviously 60 isn't crazy big yet, but when that number gets larger and the possible list of factors is stupid big, I really want you to understand. What do I need in general? What did I need to find for this problem? I need two numbers that do what? Multiply by negative 60 and add to be negative 11. I don't care which one they do first. Let me say that again. I don't care which thing they do first. I just have to make sure they, they do both of them, right? So normally the way it's taught is you start with this, this and you make them multiply correctly and then you check to see if they add correctly. But what's easier, I can come up with two numbers that add to be negative 11 quick as hell. I can do it. I don't even think about it too much. Like negative 12 and 1 make negative 11, right? Do they multiply to be 60? No. Nope. So, all right. So negative uh, 14 and 3 make negative 11. Do you guys see that? They're 11 apart, so they make negative 11. What's negative 14 times 3? Mm, well, 32. Negative 42. So that's still not 60, mm -hmm. right? 
So then I, negative 15 and 4, I got it. Do you guys see that? And I'll do an even grosser one here in a minute to try to win some of you over. I hate the fact, I think it's always taught that you start with the factors and then you check what to see what adds. Well, why not start with what makes negative 11 and check to see what makes negative 60 when you multiply? It's, it's easier. But it is, it is the same because they are... Of course. Yeah. But it's easier to come up with a list of things that add to be something than it is to come up with a list of things that multiply to be something. Mm. It's easier. But but neither way you do it, of course, the answer is... Negative 6 minus 15 x plus 4. Good. Or the other way around. Who cares? All right. All right. No. Um, let's say, for example, you bring this in a test. Do you want us to factorize first before? Uh, so I'm going to ask you to factor this. So I want you to get here, and I do want you to show me something. So you want us show to you do like some work. In the yes. Yeah. Say again. Do you want us to do like to factor? Whatever method you use, okay. you have to show me what you're doing. That's all. Okay. So if you don't do it that way, if, if you don't do it that way, I want to see what way you do it. Because okay. if I like the way you do it, mm -hmm. I might steal it from you. Now, oh, I, real careful. And I don't know if you guys are going to understand this or not, and I actually don't care if you don't like it, but some of you guys have been taught, possibly have been taught a way called, I don't know if you guys have ever heard this kind of a silly name, it's called a bottoms up method, or it's where you, oh, some of you have looked concerned, uh, where you find these and then you divide by something and magic things happen. So I'll talk more about that when we get to something where the number, notice how these problems, what's the first coefficient? One, one, one coefficient. Well, what if there was a two out there? It throws everything off. I've got to do something to take that into account. <coughs> There's a method called bottoms up where magic things happen and the answer comes out. And students love that. Teachers hate that because you didn't learn shit. You just, oh, magic, the answer. So I will not allow that. If you do that, I will make you do it again. If you do it on a test, I will take all the points off. And I'll try to make it really clear what I'm talking about. So this, so far, what we've done, it's beautiful. If you show me this work, I'm in love, I love it, it's awesome, it's, I'm, Jeff is happy, right? Um, all right, so let's make a little bit harder problem like this, and then we'll try some problems where that's not a one, where it's something else. We'll see what the hell happens there. to hire somebody. Let's see. Come up with the problem. You can do it, John. All right, no, that'll work. Three, eighteen, yes, yes. So here's well, let me attack it. Do it. Attack it. What you can do. Now, if, if you want to try this method, you got to remember both numbers are going to be different signs, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, it could be uh, 20 and negative 2 make 18, but they don't multiply to 360. You could try that way, right? Or you could try to make a list of factors of 360, of which there are many.
All right, so let's see. Uh, what sucks about 360 is two goes into it, three goes into it, four goes into it, five goes into it, six goes into it, nine goes into it, ten goes into it. Holy freaking shit. All right, so there's so many ways. So I desperately, uh, and, and real quick, just to show you, if you took 360 and you broke it all the way down, so that and this would be uh, nine, four, two, five. So you get three times three times two times two times two times five. Oh shit. Hopefully I did real quickly, so hopefully I got everything. You could recombine these, so I see 8, and I see 45. So 8 times 45 is 360. Is that an obvious thing? Do you guys see what I just did? If I break that number all the way down into its DNA, into its parts, I can recombine those parts any way I want to to make two factors. And I would never think about 8 and 45. For 360, that I wouldn't go 360. No, that would never come to my mind, right? But there it is. It doesn't work, but oh well. It's still possible to help somewhere else. So that is one other way to kind of do this: is not to make a list of factors, but break that number all the way down. And then, for example, I got uh, uh, five times two times two is twenty. That's twenty. And three times three times two is eighteen. Twenty times eighteen makes 360. Now, of course, it's still not the numbers I want, right? All right, so let me attack it from this way. They have to be different signs. So what two numbers, so let me start with like, uh, if I had negative 10, what would I add to it to make 18? You guys could do it. Negative 10 and what make 18? What do I subtract 10 from to make 18? 28. 28, so I can start here. So that makes, neg that makes 18, right? That I made 18 happen. Now I check to see if 360 also happens. No, negative 10 times 28 is negative 280. So now watch, now watch, now watch, come on. This is number sense. This is a, if I make this, so I know that I gotta go up a little bit. It's not big enough. So what about negative 12? So if I make that negative 12, if I make that go by two, that's gotta go by two. Negative 12 and 30. That makes 18, right? And what's negative 12 times 30? Negative 360. So it's like a Price is Right game, right? So if you if you, if you started at like negative, uh, what you got, Jeff? Uh, negative four and 22, and that's negative 88. That's too low. Go higher. Too low. Go higher. Yay! If you went too high, it's too high. Go lower. So, I mean, I don't know if you guys understand that manipulation. So you can either just make a list of factors of 360 and then check to see what makes 18. You could break 360 all the way down to its parts and then recombine them to make factors that you would never think about. Or you could do it by attacking this number first. The mistake I see with people that try to do this, they'll do nine and nine. What mistake did somebody do this? Like nine and nine make 18. The two numbers are supposed to be opposite signs. Right? They're supposed to multiply to be a negative number. They have to be opposite signs. So I actually want them to subtract to be 18. That's why I picked 28 and 10, they subtract to be 18. So this does require some crunching of number sense to do. All right. Will all your numbers be this gross? No. Could they? Yes. All right. So you've got to be ready to have a method of attack for that. Um, Oh, oh, real quick. Uh, what do you guys think about this problem here? Don't uh, tear your hair out too much. If I said factor that, what would you say? You shouldn't have to think about it for too long. What do you call a number that you can't factor? Because there's no factors of 9 that add to be negative 3, right? 9 is 3 and 3 or 9 and 1. And you're never going to make negative 3. So a number you can't factor, you call it prime. Prime. Or you say not factorable, which means it's saying that's why. Or you say, I can't do it. They'll just say, I can't do it because then it sounds like, all right, do you realize? you got to tell me the answer. The answer here is it can't factor it. It's not factorable. So be careful. I mean, obviously, I can give you numbers you can't factor. So that's going to happen with variable expressions, too. They can't all factor, right? 
In fact, when I made this problem, I had to think about it for a second and make it work. Okay. So what about, let's do the next level, and then we'll call it a day. Tomorrow we'll probably have some group work activities. Today is just a bunch of lecture coming at you. So let me let me start with so, so uh, if I have this kind of thing, it'll end up with x squared, blah 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 blah, right? And the numbers I'll work the numbers out. So how would it make it so that it ended up with a four here, maybe? Give me give me two numbers, two things I can multiply so there would be a four here at the end. Sure, 2x and 2x, I love it, maybe. Or it could have been 4 and 1, right? So there's multiple ways to make a 4 end up at the end. And then I'll say, let's say, plus 5, uh, plus 1. Sure, take a minute and multiply that out. So whenever we do factoring, we first kind of get motivation by looking at a multiplication problem, and then we figure out how to go backwards. So this isn't a big deal, right? This is just multiply, so you get, what do you get there? 4x squared, squared, like we said we wanted. 2x. Plus 2x. 7x. Oh, sorry. Good job, Jeff. I should just go. Plus 5. So, so notice immediately, what, what do you get in the middle term here? We get 12x. Plus 5. So is the middle term still coming from the product of these two like it did before? 5 times 1, is that the middle term? I'm sorry, 5 plus 1. So, so like over here, where would the middle term come from? So this would be uh, plus 5x minus 4, so it would be plus x. So the middle term came from these two added, right? And the last term comes from those two multiplied. So is the middle term still these two added? 5 plus 1 is 6, not 12. Do you guys understand? So I can't use the same method I used over there. So when there's a number in front... When there's these pieces of the number in front, they throw things off. They mess my middle terms up. But here's what's interesting. What do these multiply to be? The parts that went into 12, what is, what's 2 and 10 multiply to be? 20. 20. And what's 4 and 5 multiply to be? 20. 20. Interesting. That always happens. Because the parts of 4 went into the parts of the middle to mess it up. So the parts of four, the two and the two, they actually doubled my middle parts. So I've got to take that number into account. So here's how it works. So if I want to go the other way, if I want to start here and try to go back that way, what I have to do first, so maybe I can problem that works here. That's my go-to problem, I know that works. I have to do this first. I have to say 4 times negative 6 is negative 24. Just like here, 4 times 5 is 20. And then 20 factors to be 2 and 10. So here's the idea. We're going to do exactly like we did before. It's going to be a little bit harder, a little bit longer. And it only makes sense because if the first number is not a 1... It should be a little bit harder to do, right? So we're going to go exactly in reverse. I'm going to take 12x, and I'm going to split it up into 2 and 10. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. 4 times negative 6 is negative 24. What factors? So I don't do factors of this now. I do factors of these two multiplied. So some of you guys might call it the AC method, or, or uh, I, don't know. I don't know what the hell they call it. I call this... Uh, 
Because this is what I was told when I was taught this. It's the surefire method. Right, because I'm a Georgia boy. Surefire to work. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> I'll just make fun of myself before you guys get a chance. Uh, so what's the factors of negative 24 now that make negative 5? See, so the question's the same. It's just the number I'm using is coming from a different place. So what factors of negative 24 add to be negative 5? Yeah, 8 and 3, right? Good. And 8's got to be negative so that it comes out negative at the end. The bigger one's got to be negative. So the only difference that happens, and it's not even that different, and I'll show you an example here in a second, but when the first number is not 1, I have to multiply it by the end. Why would I do that shit? Because in the work, they get multiplied to the middle pieces. They, it does get mixed in. So I have to mix it in in order to work it backwards. I have to put it in there to work backwards. So now here's where people make the mistake. I can't jump to the answer now. I have to do exactly the reverse of what happened here. I've got to break my middle term up into two parts. So I, I, this part tells me how to break that middle term up. So 4x squared, I'm going to break that up into two parts. Minus 8x plus 3x. And then it's still at minus 6. So see, there's the first part. There's the last part, and the middle term I broke up like that. Now, why the hell would I do that? Because what form of factoring can I use now? How many terms do I have? So what form of factoring can I use? Grouping, and grouping is relatively easy. So I took it from a very difficult three-term problem into a four-term problem, which is almost never difficult, because it's grouping, it's GCF. Right? If you can find these numbers, then this surefire will work. Right? That's why the name. So how do I group this? What, are, what comes out of those first two? 4x. 4x and what's left? X minus 2. Good. Plus? 3. 3. Minus two. So then you get 4x plus 3. X minus 2. So there's your negative 6, right? 3 times negative 2. But the middle term is not 3 minus 2. It doesn't make negative 5, right? 8, negative 8 plus 3 makes negative 5. So the, the first numbers, whatever might be in front, does mess with my middle term. So I can't use the exact same process I could before. It's going to be a little bit harder. Let's do another one. Yes? What did you do with the last problem? Um, How do you mean? 4x plus 3. Yes? That part. How do you get there? So, so, all right. How many terms are here? Oh, you just added the 4x plus No, no, no. Uh-uh, uh-uh. What comes out of these two? What comes out of both? What do they both have? What does this have that this also has? X minus, X minus 2. So I can take it out because it's common. What would be left? 4x plus 3. There you go. That's all I did. Just GCF'd it. Never try to guess what happened. If you're not sure what happened, ask me like that. Because if you guess, you're going to guess wrong. Oh, it's going to be bad. All right. Does it have to be written like that? X minus 2, 4, X plus 3. It could be written 4, X plus 3, X minus 2. But there's no other way to write it besides those two ways. Okay. So you can do it like that, or you could write it the other way. That's it. Cool. And again, I'm not going to do it again, but if I made X a number, this would be a number, and this would be a way to factor that number like we did before. You can always do that. It actually is a way to check it to make sure that you did it correctly if you, if you have time. Um, all right, let's do another one. We'll do it again. Uh, here's the other one I know that works. Let's see. Make it a plus. All right, so let's do this one together again, and then I'll give you one to work on your own. So what's the first step here? Six. Yeah, 6 times negative 10, negative 60. Now, we actually did this problem uh, earlier. I don't know if you guys remember. We figured out the factors of 60 that make 11. Negative 15. In this case, though, it's going to be, the big one's going to have to be positive. So it'll be negative 4. Right. You guys with me so far? I mean, we did that one earlier, so we might as well. 
use our work. Good job, past us. So, again, the biggest mistake I see is people just try to jump down here and they got 15 and 4 in there. You see, they just put those numbers in here and they just do that. Now, why is that just so desperately not possibly the answer? Is x times x 6x squared? So this can't be the answer. There's no way this is the answer because this does not multiply to be this. So you can't just jump to the answer when the first number is not 1. There's a little more work in the middle. So what do I do? 6x squared plus 15x minus 4x. So whatever you write here has to actually work out to be this. So what I really just did was nothing. I just did nothing. Good job, Jeff. Because 15x minus 4x is freaking 11x. But of course, I did plenty. I actually just made it look different. Now those four freaking terms. And I can do what? Group. So that's the whole point of Surefire is to take a three-term daily. So this, all this work here, all this work here is just to find the two numbers that will make the grouping work. Because how do you make 11? I could put 8 and 3, couldn't I? 8x plus 3x is 11x, isn't it? But the grouping would never work. These are the only numbers that will make the grouping work. That's why we do that step. Hopeful, hopeful, hopeful. So then now you just got to group what comes out of those two. 3x plus 3x plus 3x plus 3x. I didn't hear you, I guess it was 2x, right? Uh, I gave it away. Shoot. But what's got to, I've got to take a negative out of here because I want them to be positive. I want that to be a 2, so I take out a negative 2. two. I can't take a 4 out, but also I know I want it to be a 2, so I'm going to take a 2 out to make this a 2. So this part, if I get that part, it actually gives me a hint on what to do on this part. The key for the other one. Yeah, yeah. So I want a 2x here. So I've got to take a negative 2, so I get a 2x. And do I get a 5? Yes, I do. Plus 5 because negative 10 divided by negative 2 is positive 5. So this is a hint for what the hell to do there. Because you know that's got to be the same as that. If they're not, you can't go further. You made a mistake or it's prime. Maybe it's a really evil problem that's prime. You never know. 